Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, yes. Today's verdict confirms what we have said from the beginning, that the claims against Johnny Depp are defamatory and unsupported by any evidence. If you didn't take pictures, it didn't happen. If you did take pictures, they're fake. If you didn't tell your friends, you're lying. If you did tell your friends, they're part of the hoax. Who wants you to believe that everyone else is lying? Did Rocky tell you that Amber Heard was having an affair with Cara Delavigne while she was still married to Johnny Depp? Yes. You changed the locks to the penthouses on May 22nd. That's why you felt comfortable having James Franco over the evening of May 22nd, 2016, Miss Heard? I do not know when James came over. Let's remind you. It's a tale of two trials. All the evidence came in in the UK. I have a right as an American to talk about what happened to me, to own my story and my truth. Lies will get you nowhere. Lies build upon lies and build upon lies. I'm obsessed with the truth. Is there any other way to interpret this verdict, though, that this jury, listening to Amber Heard, did not believe a single word? Oh, hi there. Hello, hello, hi. It's my face again. Swoop! 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 Wow. We have a verdict. The jury came back and they found unanimously that Amber Heard did in fact defame Johnny Depp on all three counts. Okay, so we're gonna dig into the verdict, the backlash, some of the damning evidence that never made it to trial, and your questions that you were tweeting me about. And I will gotta say, y'all know, sometimes we gonna take it to Petty University, okay? Class is in session, bitch. Whew. Okay, so we have so much that I want to dig into. So let's hear a quick word from today's incredible sponsor, June's Journey. Y'all are gonna love this. And then we will face plant right into the video. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game set in the 1920s where you have to find objects that are hidden in scenes just like a true crime detective. I mean, what could be more fun, right? Like we've been digging for clues all month long in this case and now we get to play out our detective dreams with this super fun mobile game. It's free to download and also very relaxing. Like it sort of takes you back in time to the glamour of the 1920s while you're solving crimes with a very diverse cast of characters and each new scene takes you deeper into these like, exciting murder mystery stories. I mean, honey, who doesn't want to play detective? Okay. It's lightly challenging, but not too much, so it keeps it really fun. I literally play this game anytime. I just want to de-stress my brain from working all day long. It's kind of like my own little escape from the chaos of life and digging into these real world cases. And let's be honest, there's just something so super satisfying about finding hidden objects and clues. I just, I love it. So join me and download June's Journey for free with my link in the description box. Trust me, you're gonna love this game, so enjoy Enjoy yourself, honey. Okay, back to the dock. No matter what happens, I did get here, and I did tell the truth, what I've been carrying on my back for six years. Okay, let's jump right into this, and we are going to start straight at the gate with the verdict. Just to, for everybody in the gallery, reminder this, that this is a court of law, mm. uh, and I, regardless of the verdict, I will not tolerate any outbursts whatsoever. Okay. I thought this moment was very telling right here. You could see everyone else's eye contact is directed towards the jury, but we see Amber break her eye contact away from the jury, and that told me right there, I was like, okay, I feel like they're not looking at her, which means they probably have not ruled in her favor. Mr. Depp's claim against Ms. Heard. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven all the elements of defamation? Yes. The statement was made or published by Ms. Heard. Yes. The statement was about Mr. Depp. Yes. The statement was false. Yes. The statement has a defamatory implication about Mr. Depp. Yes. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven by clear and convincing evidence that Ms. Heard acted with actual malice? Yes. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Oh, I still feel exactly now the way I felt when I first saw the verdict come down. I think I tweeted uh, my reactions. Wow, 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 wow. And you can quote me on that. Um, but I was just surprised that uh, Johnny won on all three counts of defamation. It is such an incredibly difficult thing to prove uh, classically in uh, defamation cases, especially 
especially if it involves a public figure. I also was surprised that they found that yes, Johnny by way of agent, representative, attorney Adam Waldman had defamed Amber. Do you find that Ms. Heard has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, no. As to this statement, appearing in the April 27, 2020 online edition of the Daily Mail, do you find that Ms. Heard has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, yes. Oh, it's just, it's a lot. It's $10 million. Now they awarded $5 million to Johnny in punitive, um, but there is a cap in the state of Virginia, which is capped out at $350,000. So the actual judgment that was handed down that Amber has to pay is $10,350,000, and Johnny on the counterclaim has to pay $2 million to Amber. Now, as far as I know, the jury was clearly instructed by the judge that uh, there is a cap of $350,000. That is why Elaine and her closing arguments for Amber said we are only looking for $350,000, which was a little funny when Elaine said that we're only looking for three hundred fifty. dollars You're only looking for that because that's all you can get. <laughs> I thought it was very telling that Johnny's side said, look, he doesn't want any punitive and the jury was like, okay, cool, but like, we still gonna award him $5 million. And I think that that was sending a message, you know, punitive damages, punitive are like meant for punishment. This is like, you should not have done what you did and now you will be punished. But of course they're limited at the three fifty. dollars now let's take a quick look at the, the summary, the jury sheet for Amber's counterclaim that was in regards to this quote from Adam Waldman. So this was in regards to the uh, cell phone incident. Quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cop, but the first attempt didn't do the trick. The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed, and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed up the place. Now if you all remember in my last doc when I was breaking down the damning evidence. Amber or Amber's lawyers used the same photo of spilled wine in two incidents. This was taken in the downstairs of the main apartment on December 15th, 2015. Do you recall that testimony? Uh, yes, I believe so. You've seen this photograph as well, right? I have. So this is a photograph that was uh, used for the December 15th incident, and this was a photo that was used in a May 21st incident. As, a, as you can see, it's the same freaking photo. You testified that this photograph reflected spilled wine in Penthouse 5 on May 21st, 2016, didn't you? And defendant's exhibit 512 and 725 seem to be different versions of the same picture, don't they? That's correct. Okay, so which is it? Which one was taken on December 15th, 2015, or May 21st, 2016? If you remove the redacted metadata, you can find out. It's right there. Or if you're telling the truth, you would know. You cannot use the same photo in two incidents because there can only be one incident that it applies to. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed the place up, got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist. She did call her publicist and then placed a second call to 911. Now Amber, of course, testified that she never called 911. I didn't call 911. I didn't call the police. I refused to cooperate with them to protect Johnny. I protected Johnny. I didn't call them once and I didn't call them twice. I didn't rough up the place, I cleaned up the place. I didn't even know the second cops were coming. If I wanted to get something from him, if I wanted to hoax Johnny, why wouldn't I cooperate with the police? Wouldn't I say something to the police? Wouldn't I do more damage to the house and, uh, than just knock over the things that you saw pictures of? It makes no sense. There's been a lot of people pissed off, of course, that uh, Amber won on this claim. But I think what the jury was really saying here was that they don't believe that Amber and her friends staged a whole incident. I, you know, when I was looking at this incident, I didn't really think that it went down that way either. Um, I did investigate this incident quite a lot. I was going to do a deep dive on it, but then, you know, things just moved too quickly for me to be able to get that out in time. So I think that was what the jury was saying here. They were like, yeah, I don't, I just, I don't know that it went down that way. As trials go, at the end of the day, the jury has the final say. I'm not sitting in this courtroom snickering. I'm not sitting in this courtroom laughing, smiling, and making snide jokes. I'm not. 
Uh, here's a question that I got on Twitter. Can you please comment on the differences between their statements released on their IGs after I think True Colors shining through? Thanks, whoops, stay petty. You, you know what, stay petty, I love that. Yes, let's talk about their statements. So let's take a look at Johnny's Instagram statement. Six years ago, my life, the life of my children, the lives of those closest to me, and also the lives of the people who for many, many years have supported and believed in me were forever changed. All in the blink of an eye. False, very serious, and criminal allegations were levied at me via the media, which triggered an endless barrage of hateful content, although no charges were ever brought against me. It had already traveled around the world twice within a nanosecond, and it had a seismic impact on my life and my career. And six years later, the jury gave me my life back. I am truly humbled. Those are very, very powerful words. From the very beginning, the goal of bringing this case was to reveal the truth Truth, regardless of the outcome, I am and have been overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and the colossal support and kindness from around the world. I hope that my quest to have the truth be told will have helped others, men or women, and I think that's a very important distinction. I think Johnny and Johnny's side has been the only side to acknowledge that not just women can be victims. I also hope that the position will now return to innocent until proven guilty, and I think that is important to apply to both both sides. Um, I think a lot of people just decided Amber was guilty without ever hearing a single shred of evidence and people who never watched the trial were already like, oh well that bitch is guilty and it's like I, you should look at the evidence, you should weigh it and make an informed opinion if you're gonna make an opinion at all. The best is yet to come and the new chapter has finally begun. Truth never perishes. Hand signed, nice touch, by Johnny Depp. Now, by contrast, let's take a look at Amber's statement. The disappointment I feel today is beyond words. I'm heartbroken that the mountain of evidence, she, she and Elaine keep going on this mountain of evidence. I'm heartbroken that the mountain of evidence still was not enough to stand up to the disproportionate power, influence, and sway of my ex-husband. And I think they're gonna continually lean into this, he had all of the power, she had none. But I think that also discredits the power that Amber had. She is also a famous celebrity public figure. She had quite a lot of power. She did a whole press tour back when the allegations came out and she was getting paid $30,000 a pop to talk about DV. She had a lot of power. While I do understand as far as like a global stature as like an entertainer and work and money, obviously Johnny had more prestige, more money, and therefore more power. I do think that the power dynamic argument ignores a a very important crucial element in that relationships don't always adhere to the power dynamic and structure of someone's financial means and we are dealing with a man who very freely gave his money his resources he let all of Amber's friends live at his houses this is a man who was very generous with his money gave Amber cars and it does ignore the fact that there are relationships that exist where the breadwinner is abused by the the person who is not. If we were to say, well, because he makes more money, he has all the power, therefore he inherently is abusive, is very dismissive of the fact that there are people who are the providers in a relationship who are taken advantage of in that relationship. Relationship power is very different than status and wealth power. Yes, they're all factors we need to take into consideration, but please do not take one and assume that that inherently means the one with the most money, most notoriety is also going to then be the abuser. That is not how that works and I think that is a dangerous narrative that people have been pushing out there. The abuser does not have to be the one who has the fame and notoriety. Maybe they become abusive because they don't have those things and they resent their partner. And at the same time I would say that, well, if that were true, if Johnny had all of the power and therefore powerful men in this case are always protected, then why the hell was he torn down to the dumpster fires of hell? when the allegations first came out and for many years he lived with that completely destroyed reputation in the press and the media and in a lot of public opinion. She then goes on to say, I'm even more disappointed with what this verdict means for other women. 
It is a setback. It sets back the clock to a time when a woman who spoke up and spoke out could be publicly shamed and humiliated. It sets back the idea that violence against women is to be taken seriously. I'm just a little taken aback thinking that Amber thought that what happened in her individual case as a person inherently sets back all women. Just all of it, the whole gender. The, the, the whole gender's going down, okay? We just go, bitch, we going down, okay? Let, lay it to rest, we out. We need to be able to look at individual cases and individual results as exactly that. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Does the jury system fail? Absolutely. But to think that your verdict just wipes out all women, I, I, I take issue with that. I believe Johnny's attorney succeeded in getting the jury to overlook the key issue of freedom of speech and ignore evidence that was so conclusive that we won in the UK. The UK trial was not yours to win. I don't, let me let's just go ahead and dispel that right now. The UK trial was not against Amber, okay? That was against the sun. I'm sad I lost this case, but I am sadder still that I seem to have lost a right I thought I had as an American to speak freely and openly. This was a brand new narrative that Amber and her team decided to put in on like the last day day. I have a right as an American to talk about what happened to me, to own my story and my truth. I have that right. Suddenly she's talking about, I have a, I have the right as an American. And I was like, w I'm sorry, where did this narrative come from? Because this is brand new and I don't know why you're introducing this approach at the very last minute. And then of course, Rottenborn in his closing was talking about, you know, first amendment rights, but it felt like, okay, if you got to turn to the constitution, then I think the case isn't going well for you. You know what I mean? Let's keep it pushing. I know how many people will come out and say whatever for him. That's why I wrote the op-ed. How many people will come out in support of him and will fall to his power? Here's a question from Gouda Cheese, which, honey, I'm with you. Elaine did a press tour today to explain why Amber Heard lost trial, citing jury broke the rules, suppressed evidence, social media, depth star power, etc. She also mentions Amber Heard won the UK trial. Your thoughts on this? <gasps> <laughs> I don't know. I've. Oh, we might need to roll the intro on this one. Petty University class in session. Okay, I, for some reason, Elaine decided to go on a little bit of a press tour. It's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? If Elaine has chosen an interesting platform, an interesting podium, if you will, to stand upon as she is blaming absolutely everyone, including the jury, for the verdict that came down not in their favor. I have no idea why I slipped into that accent. That was a terrible accent. But let's, let's take a little listen to Elaine, okay? Elaine, thank you. We're so very glad you're here. Thank you. By the way, um, I do fully believe, I think that Elaine did her best. I think that Amber was probably a difficult client. Uh, we heard Amber's reaction uh, to the verdict yesterday. This, this seems to be a huge victory for Johnny Depp this morning. Mm -hmm. A major setback for women. Mm -hmm. For Ugh. women inside the courtroom and outside the courtroom. Because? <sighs> Because basically what this said, you know, Amber had an enormous amount of evidence, although a lot of it was suppressed in this case as opposed to the UK. Okay, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a moment already. Elaine, what they what she doing with the press tour? She is they are pushing the narrative that was in Amber's uh, statement on Instagram. They are pushing the narrative that because Amber lost, that is a blow to all women of all kind and all of humanity. Like I just I cannot get behind that narrative. Here's where I sit with this. I will never shame somebody, especially I will never shame a survivor of DV or SA. If you are a survivor, I will not shame you if you uh, were on Amber's side. I will not shame you if you were on Johnny's side. The thing is, as survivors, and again, I am a survivor myself, the thing is people and survivors identify with whoever they identify with. And so when Amber and Elaine here say that this, this was a blow to all women everywhere, by saying that, that there is a huge percentage of people, survivors included, who identify with Johnny being a victim of abuse. And if you say that this was a huge blow to all women, you are instantaneously invalidating and discrediting every survivor who believes Johnny. And it's also invalidating the very real idea, and we've heard recordings again, it invalidates the very real idea that men can also be victims. 
victims, we have to be really careful that saying this one case, this one individual case, wipes out it for every other person. That is not how this works. I think it was bigger than that because you had the evidence, as you say, but they did not believe her. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they did not believe her? I think that a lot of that was that it was Johnny Depp. Mm. Uh, I think the celebrity status. But she's a celebrity too. And, and. Oh, kill me with this I can't help 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. Robert. She's a celebrity too. And. Robert. She's a celebrity too. Right. But you have to remember, it's a tale of two trials. All the evidence came in in the UK. That is not true. I mean, a, a large amount of evidence came in for your side. A lot of evidence was denied from coming in on Johnny's side. So to say all of the evidence came in, when do you ever see a trial where all of the evidence from everybody's side ever makes it in? That ain't how court works. Mr. Deb brought that one. The burden of proof was on the son in, in the UK because they had called him. He had his opportunity to tell the truth then. Um, and a three week trial, he lost. We weren't allowed to tell the jury that. Well, it's a different system, and the judge, it wasn't a jury, it was a judge. Yeah, mm -hmm. The judge was substantially yeah. true, uh, and that's, that is significant, and I think surprised a lot of legal analysts. But, you know, in this case, the jury not only didn't believe Amber Heard, but in ruling that she acted with actual malice, mm -hmm. I mean, she had the intent to cause harm, right? That's a pretty high standard to have proven. And yes. it's pretty amazing since the op-ed never even mentioned Mr. Depp. Mm. You have to remember that. What they learned from the UK case is to demonize Amber, which is what they did, and to try to suppress as much of the evidence that came in in the UK and did not come in in the United States. But the other problem is we had cameras. I'm going to just point out here that there is a long list of evidence that Elaine uh, filed motions to suppress, including the charity donations. They actively fought to keep any information regarding uh, Amber's charitable donations or lack thereof, they fought to suppress that to keep it out of this trial. They played the game the same way they're accusing Johnny Depp's team and they tried to keep crucial evidence out of this case to sway the jury to their opinion. So Elaine, you get in the finger now, girl. So I am I am a former NFL player and after a hard loss, it's easy to wake up and point to the other side. Oftentimes, I realized the better thing to do was to look in the mirror. Oof. What mistakes did I make as mm. a player? What mistakes did our coaching staff make? And then how can we improve from there? Do you feel like you guys made any mistakes along the way? Do you feel like Amber made a mistake <laughs> while she was on the stand? Because you're saying it's the celebrity, it's Johnny, it's the, it's the people who support him. But what about you and your team? He came with some heat. It is a fair question. Well, and, and that's an excellent question. And to say, and, and you know, Amber even said on the stand, I am not perfect. I am a human being. These people were giving her death threats. They threatened to microwave her baby. This is a, a masterclass in deflection and not answering the question, but again, don't hold it against Elaine. She's doing what she can, girl, okay? This is the kind of social media she was getting. So are any of us perfect? No. Is there something else we feel we should have done? Yes, I, I, absolutely. I, I always, I redo my closings a hundred times. But I think that there were a lot of influences here that were beyond our control. And I think the social media, it, it was like a Roman Colosseum. Is, is the best way to describe the atmosphere here. And I have to believe that the jury, even though they're told not to go and look at anything, we had, you know, they have weekends, they have families, they have Yeah, they were not media. sequestered. They were and, not sequestered. And, and the 10 you know, day period we had, how could they not have been influenced? But Elaine, for most people, why? Elaine's making some big claims. She's making uh, allegations that the jury did not abide by the instructions that they were given at the end of every single day. That's a very very, very serious, heavy thing to allege against seven individuals plus the alternates to make the assumption that because it didn't go your way, that the jury must have inherently just been checking out social media and therefore social media persuade them to hand down the verdict that they did. I think that is a dangerous narrative. I think it's something that she cannot prove. I don't think that's the move, Elaine. The way that Depp's team approached this was based on ignorance. It, they it completely ignored the cycle and just said, said, oh, she wouldn't have done this if he had been hitting her. That was their approach. So you thought that they weren't fighting fair? 
Correct. I, I don't think they were fighting fair. And you um, think absolutely. Amber Heard is, in fact, a survivor of domestic violence? Yes, I, I absolutely believe that. And there's a tremendous amount of evidence, much of which did not come into this trial, did come into the UK trial. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're going to let the camera keep true. rolling. This is not true. This is not, doesn't even make sense. Robert. I have a right as an American to talk about what happened to me, to own my story and my truth. I have that right. Now, aside from the lawyering, I'm gonna say this. I do think that Amber lost this case for herself. I think she had too many instances where she was very clearly lying to the jury. One of the most obvious lies, I did a whole deep dive on this, was in regards to the settlement money and the pledging versus donations. Let's take another look. As reported in the media, the amount received in the divorce was $7 million, and $7 million is being donated. It's the virtue signaling for me. Amber did not need to make this public statement. Amber chose to make this public statement to convey herself in a certain light. There's no part of me that thinks that this was not virtue signaling. The, 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 and actually were all kinds of accusations uh, flying your way when you said all this and then there was a divorce settlement, you got seven million dollars. People were saying this is all about the money. But then you did something that twisted that whole argument. What did you do with that money? Seven million dollars in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. ACLU. More power to you because that's, that's something that I've never heard of. I wanted of. nothing. And in fact, your exact words were, quote, seven million in total was donated to, there it split is. it between the ACLU and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. There it is. Quote, right? That's that's correct. I made that statement as soon as I got a divorce and we reached the settlement. That's when I pledged it right then. Pledged. But you hadn't donated your entire, entire $7 million settlement to charity at that point, had you? That's incorrect. No. Okay. That, that is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie. Sitting here today, Ms. Heard, you still haven't donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. There it Isn't is. That right? Incorrect. I pledged no. the entirety no. of Ms. the settlement no. of million not my to charity and I, f I intend to fulfill Heard. those obligations. No, that was not the question. Stop the presses. Sitting here today, you have not donated the $7 million, donated, not pledged, donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. Boom. Roasted. I use pledge and donation synonymous with one another. They but do I the don't. Same thing. Heard. Camille be coming in hot, bitch. You have not donated the $7 million, donated, not pledged, donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. I use pledge and donation synonymous. They are not synonymous <laughs> words. You know what, Petty University roll the intro. I don't know if we need a lexicon. I don't know if we need Webster's Dictionary. Webster, Webster, can you come out and let us tell the people pledge does not mean the same thing as donation. I mean, we all, we all know this, right? She's claiming she made it all. She didn't even sign the pledge form. It's so obvious that you're lying and not just because of what she was saying, but there were the ACLU literally testified and said if she hasn't paid. The Children's Hospital literally testified and said she hasn't paid. And when I saw Amber on the stand say that that she hasn't paid it because Johnny sued her. When Johnny hadn't sued her for all of these periods, she blamed Johnny for not having made those payments. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, you are obviously lying, but now you're blaming Johnny. And Johnny is alleging that you, Amber, abused him. So if those allegations are true, then that to me looks like an abuser blaming the victim. And this is something that the jury saw. And you know, here's some testimony from a rep from the Children's Hospital in regards to those donations not being made. Why did you send this uh, letter to Ms. Hurd and Ms. Godley? I was trying to see if the pledge was going to be fulfilled or not. As of the date of this deposition, um, March 30th, 2021, how much in total has Ms. Hurd donated to the Children's Hospital? $250,000. 
$250,000 while Amber sat on the witness stand and testified that $3.5 million had all been paid. And here's a letter from the Children's Hospital saying, I'm following up on the correspondence of the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Since the first installment, the CHLA has not received further installments. I am inquiring if you have knowledge if CHLA should expect further installments on your behalf or if the pledge will not be fulfilled. I appreciate any insights on this matter. And uh, Amber ghosted them. Amber ghosted the Children's Hospital. Dipped out, gone, bitch, out, out the door. <laughs> Amber who? Pledge what? <laughs> Never heard of her. You know what I mean? But if you lie about something so obvious, it just, it, it, for me, that really went to tell me something about her character. Remember, in cases like this, credibility is a very important thing, and we know this because of the jury instructions, and it says, you are the judges of the facts, the credibility of the witnesses, and the weight of the evidence. You may consider the appearance and manner of the witness on the stand, their intelligence, their opportunity for knowing the truth and for having observed the things about which they testified, their interest in the outcome of the case, their bias, and if any have been shown, their prior inconsistent statements, or whether they have knowingly testified untruthfully as to any material fact in the case. All of this is what the jury is instructed to consider when they come up with their verdict. You may not arbitrarily disregard believable testimony of a witness. However, comma, love that comma, if you have considered all the evidence in the case, then you may accept or disregard all or part of the testimony of a witness as you think proper. I am telling you, if you go on the stand and you lie, by the jury instructions, they could literally choose to throw your entire testimony in the f trash. And I keep coming back to imagine the power if Amber had sat on that stand and said, you know what? I f***ed up. I had every intention of paying the money to both of these charities and I got ahead of myself. I had, you know, my own bills and expenses. I'm taking care of my family, like whatever it is. And I did not pay them the way that I promised and I feel f awful about it. I have to live with this every day of my life. I did not make good on my promise. I am someone who really wants to make good on my promises. If she had conceded on one wrongdoing, then I think this potentially could have turned out maybe a little different. I don't know, it might not have had much of an effect, but at least the jury would have thought she's a more credible witness. No human being is perfect, certainly not. And living with it for six years and waiting to be able to bring the truth out. I went through this again in one of the other deep dives. I'm just gonna mention it here because I think it is very telling and I think this is something that the jury probably took into consideration. When Amber was saying she wanted nothing. More power to you because that's that's something that I've never I heard I wanted of. nothing. That too was a lie. She wanted things. It is documented in a letter that was sent to Johnny Depp. Did you receive this letter on or around May 24, 2016? Yes, it was around that time. Here is a letter that was sent, and look at the demands that were made. In addition, we are requesting on Amber's behalf the following. Appropriate pendente light support, which is money, exclusive use and possession of the black Range Rover, the vehicle she is currently driving with Johnny to continue to make all payments for any encumbrances thereon. Exclusive use and possession of the Broadway penthouses. This is the Eastern Columbia building. She wanted numbers one, three, and five, with Johnny to continue to pay mortgage, utilities, etc., associated therewith, and a contribution towards her reasonable and necessary attorney's fees in the amount of $100,000 and $25,000 for forensic accounting costs to be paid to my firm by close of business on May 27th, 2016. Giving him just about two days to meet these demands, and it was on May 27th that she filed the TRO once he did not. Would she be entitled to these things? Of course. California is a community property state. They stupidly didn't get a, a prenup by her saying she wanted nothing. To me, it looks like she wanted quite a lot. If I was the jury, I would be like, <laughs> you know what else somebody might call this letter? Extortion. I'm just, who said that? Who did, I didn't say that. Allegedly, of course. And on top of that, <laughs> who 
Oops. You know what else the jury saw? The jury saw the testimony from their couple's counselor, a licensed therapist, who testified saying that Amber asked her in advance, what would happen if I filed for a TRO? Directing your attention to the last snippet from that session, will she have advantage if she leaves him but files with police for abuse first? Was that a question that she asked you? Yes, this oh. was her talking out loud, trying to strategize for herself. This therapist literally testified to saying that Amber was asking her, hey, if I file for a divorce, would it help me if I filed uh, for an abuse TRO before? As the therapist put it, strategizing. Is that something that's out of the question for a potential victim to be thinking about? No, it's not. Amber went in and filed for an emergency TRO, a TRO that was filed, by the way, when Johnny was already out of the country. Sometimes, not always, but there are times that people will file an emergency TRO as a sort of weapon against the person that they are trying to divorce because if you have a TRO it's a little bit more that they can use against the person that they are divorcing and trying to get settlement money out of. But when you uh, put this on top of the extortion alleged letter, uh, when you put that on top of her lying about other things, I think it did not go well to her credibility as a witness. Everyone that I've met, the people that have supported me, suddenly I'm scum. Why? Never had to happen. One little lie. So yes, very angry. Simlina94, I hope I pronounced that right. As a Swedish person, the whole juror system confuses me, understandably, and I would greatly appreciate if you could sum it up. But there was a little snip here that she said, because this has been going around a lot, so I'm going to just play this. It's a tale of two trials. All the evidence came in in the UK. Now the UK court system and the US court system are very different. I'm not gonna say one is better than the other. They're just very different. In the UK, the trial uh, verdict was determined by one single 71 year old man. In the US, the verdict is determined by seven US citizens. And jurors are very heavily vetted in a different way than a judge would be vetted. Jurors go through, you know, the whole jury selection process. They're asked a bazillion questions to try to find out if there's any bias in them whatsoever. And I'd say in a lot of ways, it's a much more difficult system to win a case. Now, the great thing about the UK trial or any trial is you can go read all the transcripts for yourself and come to your own conclusions. But we do know that one thing that heavily factored into the judge's decision was in regards to Amber claiming and stating that she had pledged and donated all of the charity money. And so it's interesting to me, Elaine saying, well, not everything got into the US trial. And it's like, well, Elaine, you know what didn't make it into the UK trial? The ACLU testimony, the Children's Hospital testimony, clarifying that Amber lied. So I wonder if the donations factored into the judge's decision, what would the judge have thought about Amber's credibility and character if the judge found out that in fact, oh, she lied about that. Now, in regards to the claims that there were evidence not allowed in this trial, I think Elaine forgot that there was a significant piece, at least in my opinion, piece of evidence, a recording that was not allowed into this trial. Now, this is from the Australia finger incident. I did an entire deep dive on this. If y'all are interested, I will have that linked below. There were some incredible inconsistencies that were happening in testimony around that uh, incident. Incident. This recording I thought had very damning evidence against Amber. Uh, in her testimony, we saw that very early on she said she would never do MDMA. I would never do MDMA with him. I would never do MDMA with him, but did a little digging. This is this is not true, at least from what it seems. Now in this recording, this is when Dr. Kipper and Nurse Debbie and the JJ and some other people, Ben King, all come to the house after the big destruction and they're trying to find the finger and get Johnny to the hospital. And there's this recording on her phone and you literally hear Amber say to uh, Jerry Judge that she was doing all kinds of substances. Here's what she said. So she's saying that she found empty bags of, you know, the white stuff. She's blaming that on Johnny. <laughs> Uh, 
So that's very clearly, to me, uh, evidence that she lied on the U.S. stand. So again, Elaine, here is evidence that was not allowed into the U.S. trial. If the jury had heard that, would that have made them call into question Amber's testimony in regards to the Australia incident? Now this is a photo that Amber took of uh, the aftermath of the Australia incident where Johnny had gone, you know, and was like writing in blood and like doing all of these things. And Johnny had written all of this stuff uh, on the mirror. There's this red lipstick writing. The handwriting is completely different. I firmly do believe that Amber wrote this. And what I pointed out in the previous video, call Carly Simon, she said it better Babe. Amber was, in all of the recordings, the only one that I heard between the two of them who called the other person Babe. I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you, uh, uh, hit you me. across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. She called Johnny Babe quite often in the recordings. I never heard Johnny call her Babe, so this sounds like something that she most likely wrote. But another thing about this, which, whoo! Amber testified in the US, all of this alleged happened to her, she took some sleeping pills, went to sleep, woke up late the next day, came downstairs and heard uh, Johnny blaring Marilyn Manson music. I remember uh, taking a bunch of sleeping pills, not a bunch, like two, which is a lot for me. <clears throat> I don't remember falling asleep, but I know I fell asleep because I woke up the next day. Um, I assume it was late morning. I could hear him downstairs. Uh, I could hear Marilyn Manson um, music, not in person. I could hear the music. Maybe he said it was Marilyn, or maybe I could uh, recognize it. I don't remember, but I became aware of it. That's what I was hearing. It was blaring. And then she also testified that she didn't write Call Carly Simon and that she didn't even know who Carly Simon was. What, if anything, did you have to do with the writing of that red? Nothing. Before this trial, did you know who Carly Simon was? Uh, I might have heard her music, but no, I didn't. Okay. Did you know what songs Carly Simon wrote or sang? No, you had to tell me. Thank you. Here's the thing, so Carly Simon wrote the song, You're So Vain. Johnny, <laughs> I kid you not, Johnny literally recorded a cover of that song with Marilyn Manson, and he recorded the version after they started dating, which means Amber very most likely heard that recording. And therefore, for her to say that she doesn't know who Carly Simon is, she doesn't know the song, the reference, I firmly call that into question. Not only did your boyfriend and then become husband record a cover of the song you say you don't know, but she testified that when she came downstairs, Johnny was blaring Marilyn Manson and is it a possibility that Johnny was blaring that song you're so vain absolutely and Amber could have been pissed off and got her lipstick and been like call Carly Simon she said it better babe meaning Carly did the song better babe leave me a comment let me know what y'all think on that little bit right there I my goal is the truth I pride myself on honesty. I, lies build upon lies and build upon lies. I'm obsessed with the truth. There was some other testimony that I thought was particularly compelling. Amber's very last statements in her when she came up uh, to testify for the second time versus the very beginning of Johnny's statements about the truth. Here's how Amber phrases it. I have the right to tell my story. I have the right to say what happened to me. I have the right to my voice and my name. He took it long enough. I have a right as an American to talk about what happened to me, to own my story and my truth. 
she has the right to tell my truth. I thought that was a very interesting thing to say here. We are in trial, we are in court. We don't want to hear your truth, we want to hear the truth truth. That is what the court system is set up for, to get to the truth, because there is always the truth, and then there's the my truth. And so by contrast, here is how Johnny set up his entire case. My goal is the truth. My goal is the truth. I pride myself on honesty. I pride myself on truth. Truth is the only thing I'm interested in. Lies will get you nowhere, but um, lies build upon lies and mm -hmm. build upon lies. It's too much to cover. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with the truth. Sharp difference there, right? Amber saying, I have a right to tell my truth. Johnny saying, I want to tell the truth. And that may have stuck with the jury. Everybody knows Morgan Tremaine by now. He was the uh, former TMZ uh, employee who uh, testified in regards to the source of the cabinet slamming footage, heavily implying that Amber, who was the original copyright owner of that footage, leaked it to TMZ. And we also know that Morgan had the clapback of the century, bitch. Let's watch that one more time because it's so worth it. You know this case is being televised, right? I, I am aware that there are cameras. And so this gets you your 15 minutes of fame, doesn't Objection, it? your honor, <sighs> I, I can ask that question. Elaine. Um, so I stand to gain nothing from this. I'm actually putting myself kind of in the target of TMZ, a very litigious uh, organization, and I'm not seeking any 15 minutes here. Though you may, you're welcome to speculate. I could say the same thing by taking Amber Heard as a client for you. <laughs> A little argumentative, don't you think? Oh, hardly. I find that to be purely logical. Thank you. Who that the clap back of the century on that Watch how somebody get him into Petty University. I know this trial is it was a very, very serious thing for everybody involved, but there's these little moments, a little breath of air, right? And we need this as humans. Sometimes we need to break the seriousness with a laugh here and there. It is a survival coping mechanism. So I was curious to see his thoughts on the verdict, and he tweeted, I immediately broke out in tears, which I, I, I firmly believe. I think this is emotional for everybody involved, no matter whose side they're on. I don't know what part I really played in any of this, but I told my truth and I feel a weight off me with this case coming to an end. I think that Amber's team got out lawyered. No bias if I'm just listening the, to them present the cases. All of the, the, the team for Johnny Depp worked so brilliantly together and I think that really came across to the jury. I think that they also uh, were able to present Johnny's case in a very linear way that just made sense. They broke it down very easily and I think that uh, Elaine in particular did not make things easy easy to follow. I, we do know that, of course, the case presented is very important, but just as important is how the jury relates to or likes the attorneys. And if they don't like the style, the approach, if they can't follow it, or if they get bored, all of these things come into play in how a jury uh, ultimately kind of factors their decision. That's just, you know, human nature. <laughs> Shortly after the verdict was handed down, Ben Chu, the, you know, the lead attorney, and Camille Vasquez did a press conference. It was short and sweet. Let's take a look. Today's verdict confirms what we have said from the beginning, that the claims against Johnny Depp are defamatory and unsupported by any evidence. We are grateful, so grateful to the jury for their careful deliberation, to the judge and the court staff who have devoted an enormous amount of time and resources towards this case. Our judicial system is predicated on each person's right to have his or her case heard, and we were honored, truly honored, to assist Mr. Depp in ensuring that his case was fairly considered throughout the trial. We are also most pleased that the trial has resonated for so many people in the public who value truth and justice. Now that the jury has reached its conclusive verdict, it's time to turn the page and look to the future. Thank you all so much, Thank and you. thanks to the jury. Thank you so much. Short and sweet statement. I thought it was everything that it should have been and nothing more. And Amber's side did not make a statement there, perfectly within their rights, and now we've seen Elaine doing a little bit of a press tour. 
Now, I did note in my last video, uh, in regards to some damning evidence, uh, that there was a text that was between Johnny and Dr. Kipper that I found particularly distasteful, where he said, you know, right here, forgot to tell you, had it hopefully very positive and free of ego squawk with Amber last night, that went very well. And then I shot a few in a club on Sunset Boulevard. I, so I posted that in the video and I said, obviously there's no excuse for saying something like that. I think that would be absolutely disgusting. Now, several of you pointed out that he actually could have been referring to a drink. There's a Negroni, Palo Negro, and, and of course the, the word Negro meaning black. And so I think it's, when I'm looking at the, the text now and then I shot a few in Sunset Boulevard, I think it's entirely possible that that was in reference to shooting some, some, some drinks, right? So I wanted to make sure that I made that clarification in the same breath, um, because I personally take these things into account. I cannot make the same clarification with Amber. There was a, 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 some tweets that Amber made that I think were blatantly racist. This goes for me lying about uh, the pledges to the children's hospital and saying some racist ash on Twitter. Tells me things, or little insights, I should say. Not their entire character, but little insights. Amber had tweeted, checkpoints on your home streets. Is this the great America we're aiming for? Raids, fences, and police state like checkpoints don't feel like the land of the free our immigrant ancestors built. So she made that one tweet, fine. But then it was her next tweet. Somebody, you know, screenshotted and posted, we noticed you deleted the racist tweet that preceded this one. The internet saved a copy for you. Here, Amber tweeted, just heard there's an ice checkpoint in Hollywood a few blocks from where I live. Everyone better give their housekeepers, nannies, and landscapers a ride home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get pissed off. I don't think that I need to point out how racist that is, the implication, and when I saw her, the response to this, where someone was like, yo, this was racist, her response was to post a picture of a child, a minority child in this country, and to use this child to post the following. With this human rights crisis being so politicized, it is hard to make a simple statement <laughs> without it being used to distract from the real issues. It's hard for everyone to not be negatively affected by this subject in some way. Bitch, I do not accept. <laughs> you cannot always be right. You should try being wrong sometime because you might learn something. This is, this is what gaslighting of the public means. You said a fucked up thing. You said a thing that is inherently racist, that implies that marginalized communities, that immigrants are, are, are what, just the nannies and the housekeepers and your, like, landscapers, the, the slaves, the servants to you? And then to gaslight people by acting like people being upset by your racist statements is somehow them just being distracted from the real issue. The real issue are the privilege that allows you to make tweets like this and then pretend it never happened. The issues are the inhumane treatment of people who are of different colors, i.e. reducing them down to just your specific tiny little subset of jobs that have been weaponized against marginalized communities since the dawn of time and people acting like that's all they do. And to just call it making a simple statement. It's a simple statement to you because it didn't affect you. It is not a simple statement to everybody else. All of the marginalized communities who have to see this kind of book constantly being spewed out and then defended. And again, I relate these things when I see how you are in the wild, right? In nature, in life. When I see a trail of behaviors in somebody and then I see her take the stand and when she's confronted with things that are like, wow, that was a really thing that you did or said. When she was confronted with, hey, you're lying about the pledge and she doubles down on it or she gaslights in a way. I take all of these things to be an account of somebody's character. This is from Bray Donda. Amber's lawyer said that they are filing an appeal. Thoughts on how that will go? Does your client want to appeal? Oh, absolutely. And she has some excellent grounds for it. I do not know if that will ultimately happen. Appeals can take a very long time and can be very expensive. I do not think that uh, Amber has the money. Is she able to pay a $10.4 million judgment? Oh, no, absolutely not. Now, will she have a benefactor? Will Elon Musk step in and pay the bills? I don't know. We'll just, we will have to see. But I was not surprised that that would be the immediate statement that they would release. 
Question from Michelle, what do you think about people saying that this is the start of the end for the uh, Me Too or how Believe All Women is being seen as a toxic or dangerous idea that perpetuates the idea that it's harder for men to be victims? I do think that the, you know, hashtag Believe All Women is, is exclusionary to other victims who are not women. I think that was started with generally good intentions, but I think it can spiral in a way that erases is the fact that there are other victims that exist in the world. How is she today? What, is, what is her next move? She's right. Well, her next move is appeal. There were but a she's number. She's heartbroken. She is heartbroken. And one of the first things that she said when she came back from the verdict, when we went into the conference room, was, "I am so sorry to all these women." That she said that. Yes, she felt like she had let down all of these women because she had more evidence than most people do, and yet they still didn't believe her. Elaine Charleston, Bretta Hoff, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. A lot of people still to this day continue to not acknowledge where the Me Too movement actually started. Uh, a lot of people credit it to being uh, when Alyssa Milano um, posted her tweet about uh, the conversation of Me Too. The movement did not start with Alyssa Milano. The movement did not start with actors, predominantly white actresses in Hollywood. And I think that is important that we make sure that we understand the roots of all of these things, right? No, the movement was actually founded by Tarana Burke, uh, a black woman who the central idea around it was that marginalized communities, especially black and brown girls and women, do not get taken seriously uh, when they are sharing about being victims of abuse. And she founded the Me Too movement in 2006. This was long before, like the 10 years or more before a Alyssa Milano's tweet. You know, I think it's important to note these things, and I'll read just a little bit here um, about it. Activist Tarana Burke, the founder of the Me Too movement, sees a stark contrast in the timeline of the Weinstein's case scene and that of R&B singer R. Kelly, who dodged accusations for more than 25 years. Remember when things, uh, allegations were coming out about Weinstein, there was very quick justice in that regard. R. Kelly took 25 years. R. Kelly's victims primarily, if not uh, completely, completely being black and brown girls. As Tarana Burke says, we are socialized to respond to the vulnerability of white women and it's a truth that is hard for some people to look in the face and they feel uncomfortable when I say things like that. But it is true. There's a stark difference in what it takes to get attention around black women and girls. This is not a debate, this is a fact. This is something that happens in our society. And so when, you know, Alyssa Milano's tweet, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with her tweeting that, I think that was a great thing Thing that happened and encouraged a lot of people to start telling their stories, but it did as it does, it did kind of erase the original narrative, which was to place emphasis and resources and focus on marginalized communities of victims. And instead the movement did get taken over quite predominantly with, you know, white women in Hollywood. Again, I'm not saying that their stories are to be invalidated. Of course not. Every story is deserving to be told and to be heard but in the same breath this was the core root of the Me Too movement that I think to certain extents we've lost sight of. Here's a question from Kyla who says, do you think that the ACLU will speak up and potentially drop Amber Heard uh, for potentially lying about DV? Right now, I don't think that the ACLU will drop Amber. We do know that the ACLU has already <laughs> filed. They are demanding uh, that Johnny pay them $86,000 worth of um, fees that they're charging for the time spent gathering documents, which y'all gathered like two pages of documents. I don't know where you get 86,000 dollars. But to me, because they're going after Johnny for that, I think they are just going to double down on their position. Here's a question from She Roy. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. If Amber's team uh, done something differently, do you think it's possible she could have convinced the jury enough to possibly make it hung jury or something different? There's always the possibility. The thing that they should have done differently is that Amber should have been honest. But again, she's still having to combat these recordings that were in evidence that are very difficult, I think, to come back from. DJ Saul says, do you believe this case could set a precedent for male victims everywhere. I think it can if we continue to share a correct 
<laughs> and healthy narrative. And that's as simple as just identifying and acknowledging male victims exist. If someone is a victim, they're a victim. It doesn't matter like who they are. If they're a victim, they're a victim. I just hope that in um, building up that fact and that narrative that we don't inherently tear down women victims who also do exist. Question from Bo, why do you think the media seem to be on Amber Heard's side and saying there is a misjustice that has occurred? Some of the people who are writing are survivors who identified with Amber, so that's their take on it. I think other media who have written in support of Amber, they're the same media who were very blatantly blasting Johnny when these allegations first came out in 2016 with the TRO. So for them to then now support Johnny and the the way the jury found this case, that would be them having to, in essence, retract their previous statements, and we don't see a lot of people, we don't see a lot of media willing to admit if they potentially got something wrong. Uh, here's one from We Support Johnny Depp who says, look forward to your video. Thank you. I appreciate that always. Uh, what will you plan to follow next? I will be putting out the part two of the Sienna May Jack Wright situation. It is coming. A lot of y'all are asking. So part two is coming. I'm doing a lot of things are happening behind the scenes. Thank you for hanging with me as we covered this trial because I did think it was incredibly important to cover and hopefully like dispel some of the misinformation. So I try to add a a little, a little balance to it. Child. Okay, it is time for a kitty palette cleanser. Now this, this big girl right here. So this is Adora Bill from the billing department, but I now call her Moose, okay? She's Moose. You wanna look, you wanna say hi? There we go, hi Moose. Do you wanna show the belly? Belly, 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 belly. <laughs> Billy, 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 I love your belly. Moose is such a sweet girl and she is really funny. She plays fetch with me every single day. Several times a day when I'm at my desk and I'm working, I hear this little like tsh, little drop of a mouse and she gives me these little moose taps on my leg and that lets me know it is time to play fetch. Moose, moose. And it is the cutest thing. I grab the mouse and she likes to get a little bit of a head start and then I just throw it across the room and she brings it back to me every single time. Get a head start. Good, good girl, Moose Moose. <laughs> She's seriously just the sweetest thing. Say bye, Moose Moose. Bye, Moose Moose. Now, please, please keep tagging me on Instagram in your petty outfits. Y'all are the official class of Petty University, and it just makes me so happy to see your outfits, and I will repost you. Couple of Twitter shout outs from my last doc where I deep dive and broke down the most damning evidence from this trial that did and didn't make it into the trial. If you haven't seen it, it's linked below. First shout out goes to Trivia Love BTS, who said, I said it the day you posted you were making this video but I'll say it again this is what we need more people with critical thinking and who is willing to see things in different perspectives and objectively I'm so glad you are covering this thank you so much I, I do hope that this series has been helpful second shout out goes to silly kins who says when swoop talked about not every victim has pictures that made me feel the most seen I grew up with emotional mental abuse and was always scared no one would believe me because I didn't have the physical proof of my pain and injuries. Thank you, Swoop, for sticking up for all victims. Um, first of all, you never have to thank me, um, and I'm truly sorry for what you've been through, and I do hope that you have found some healing. If you want to be my next Twitter shout-out, make sure to follow me on Twitter at SpankyV, linked below, and retweet this video right here. And definitely be sure to check out the super fun game June's Journey and download for free with my link in the description box below. You're gonna love this game, solve those crimes, and enjoy yourself, honey. I think no matter whose side you're on, I think we can all agree on two things. That this trial was a disturbing glimpse into the deep complexities of DV and the conversation around DV and SA will never be the same. On one side, people are afraid that this will make it harder for survivors to be believed and on the other, people think this was a triumph for survivors. I think the ultimate aftermath will have to reveal itself over time like anything, but it doesn't have to be negative. Will this trial set survivors and the Me Too movement back? 
only if you want it to. I think it ultimately comes down to changing the conversation around victims and abusers, about how we let the hateful, misinformed narrative about survivors have a place in our society versus well-informed, open advocacy and understanding that things like DV and SA are incredibly complicated. Remember, there's no perfect victim, there's no perfect abuser, there's no perfect story. There's just the truth and that can be difficult to find. There have been countless social stigmas surrounding believing the victim since the dawn of time. Like what were you wearing when they assaulted you? Were you drinking? Did you flirt? Why didn't you leave them? Why didn't you tell somebody where are the photos? Not everything is as it seems. Sometimes victims don't have visible injuries. Sometimes they have evidence, sometimes they don't, but most of them suffer in silence. Every story is different, every story is valid, but at the same time, every story is exactly the same in that they always involve an abuser. Just stepping outside of this trial and beyond all of this and giving it more of a global perspective, I think it's time we shift the conversation around victims and survivors entirely. Instead of constantly asking the victim what they could have done differently, we need to ask the abuser what they could have done differently. Why don't we spend more time educating people on the early signs of abusive behavior so that it can be addressed immediately and hopefully prevent abusers from becoming abusers and therefore save victims that become survivors. Now, one thing is undeniably true. Male victims exist. Female victims exist. Trans, non-binary, and any identity of victims exist. The truth is the truth and that is the truth. If you are a survivor, no matter who you are, you deserve to be heard and I believe you. And it's not your fault. The truth is the truth. I know that you're hurting. I know things like this trial can be confusing or scary that you might feel unsure or afraid to tell your story. And I'm not going to promise you that it is an easy thing to do, but I do promise you the truth is the truth. If you are a survivor, your story is valid no matter what. If you want to tell your story, okay, I'm cheering you on in the background, you got this. And if you don't want to tell your story, like not now or not ever, okay, I'm cheering you on in the background, you got this. And with that, all I'm going to say is class dismissed. Swoop!